from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications. You're watching WUFT News. A Michigan man has been charged with six counts of murder after a deadly shooting rampage. The death of a six-year-old has a Florida family pleading for help. And the Marion County Sheriff's Office is opening a new room to keep domestic violence victims safe. We'll have a look at the space coming up. But first, local law enforcement needs your help in finding an armed robbery suspect. That's our top story tonight. Good evening. It's February 22nd. I'm Marie Edinger. And I'm Taylor Trichet. Thanks for joining us. Two armed men robbed workers at the Black Hawk Internet Cafe in Palaka late last week. Officials say at least one of the suspects was armed. After reviewing surveillance footage, deputies identified and arrested 25-year-old Derek Tobler. Officials say Tobler's accomplice was also identified as 29-year-old Antonio Tobler. Deputies say Antonio is wanted on active warrants, and anyone with information is asked to call the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. If you need an injunction to help escape domestic violence, the process can be problematic for someone already endangered. But one area sheriff's office is trying to make the process a bit more comfortable for the victim. Ryan Roberts joins us now with more about what he saw today in Marion County. Ryan? Marie, the sheriff's office has decided to earmark a room for a special purpose so victims can help work on their paperwork in a safe place. This small room with a TV and toys is being called a domestic violence injunction room. There have already been 145 injunctions issued this year in Marion County, but now the, those victims have a place just for them. Marie? Thank you, Ryan. The Florida Forest Service is fighting a Duval County wildfire that spread across more than 600 acres. They tweeted out these pictures of the damage today. You can see burnt trees and land, but the Forest Service says no structures are threatened, luckily. The wildfire is near Cecil Field in Duval County. Officials say by now it's about 70% contained, though the cause is still under investigation. The four-mile widening of State Road 40 west of Ocala is taking several months longer than expected, and Zika fears have become part of the equation. During the construction, it's harder to get on and off the road, especially for trucks, leading to complaints by business owners and commuters. One worker says the project is taking longer than expected for reasons out of their control. The delays to the rain, the lay bite to the weather, a lot of things and stuff. Uh, you know, it was just, it was just hard with this this year because of the weather conditions. The roadway is getting a new drainage system, but the old drains have backed up during heavy rains, leaving standing water and concerns about mosquitoes potentially spreading diseases like Zika. When the work is complete, perhaps next month, the divided highway will have signal upgrades and bike lanes. And you can be on the lookout for more delays other than that construction. Weather over these next couple of days is not going to be pretty. Not at all. WFT's Brittany Van Voorhees joins us now from the Weather Center with a look where a brief shower could be tonight. Well, ladies, already seeing a couple spotty showers. When I say a couple, only about one or two on radar. Coming up after the break, I'll let you know how long it's going to last. Back to you. Thank you, Brittany. An Uber driver accused of shooting eight people in Michigan has made his first appearance in court. Prosecutors say they think they know what happened, but they're still trying to figure out why. Investigators say 45-year-old Jason Dalton, a husband and father of two and an Uber driver, admitted to being their guy. Prosecutors in Kalamazoo say Dalton killed six and injured two others in a span of six hours on Saturday night, all while continuing to give riders past give rides to passengers. The eight victims were shot in three separate locations. He is charged with six counts of murder plus two counts of assault with intent to murder along with weapons charges. Uber says Dalton passed a background check and police officers say he has no prior criminal record. And around the state, a family is pleading for help in finding the person who shot and killed their son outside their home, even offering a $25,000 reward for answers in six-year-old King Carter's case. Hatzel Vela has that story. Exactly 24 hours later, back in the very same spot, a father retells that story. When I heard the shots, I ran out the house. I ran everywhere around here asking, where is King? At the end, a moment of prayer. In Jesus' name, Jesus. we pray. Amen. Amen. Also in Miami, a woman was left in a coma after being severely beaten and nearly stabbed to death on Valentine's Day. Investigators say she was attacked by her roommate who'd moved in just a week before. She'd found 35-year-old Byron Mitchell through Craigslist. Byron dialed 911 saying he'd killed Jones in self-defense, but officers say he hit Jones's head against a floor repeatedly and choked her. He's been charged with attempted murder. Reports show 23-year-old Danielle Jones is showing signs of improvement today, opening her eyes and blinking but she still may have major brain damage. 
Hundreds of protesters are speaking out against the discharge of Lake Okeechobee water into the St. Lucie River. They marched on the Stewart Causeway yesterday, fighting for the water below them in the Indian River Lagoon. They say high water levels in Lake Okeechobee threaten the aging dike and the residents protected by it. On top of that, they say the poor quality water that discharges can present health risks for animals in the rivers. Water managers tried minimizing the damaging discharges by storing water elsewhere, but they've run out of room. And rising water levels already have wildlife seeking higher ground in southwest Palm Beach County and farther south. In February 1856, a father buried his 10-day-old baby girl on a piece of land he owned in Gainesville. The place became Evergreen Cemetery, and 106 years later, it's still sacred ground. WUFT's Maggie Lawrence shows us the anniversary event this past weekend. Normally, you don't find so much music and cheer in a place used for reflection or grieving. Maggie Lorenz, WUFT News. Those wishing to learn more about the Renewal Initiative can visit thiswondrousplace.org. WUFT News First at Five is just getting started. Coming up, none of us like paying for parking tickets, and the number being issued is climbing. We'll have that story for you in two minutes. Plus, a major music star takes a big hit in court. Those stories and more entertainment news coming up after the break. I'm also tracking another night with warm temperatures, but spotty showers are possible. Coming up, I'll let you know how long these sprain chances are going to last. First at five, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Shark attacks reach an annual high, and Florida's been no exception. We'll have the numbers just ahead. Also coming up, a look at the unseen effects of prescribed burns. And we'll have the latest updates from local and national campaign trails. But first, bundle up. A freeze warning is in effect for parts of North Florida. That's our top story this February 9th. I'm Marie Edinger. And I'm Emily Braun. Thanks for joining us. UF forecaster Amanda Hawley joins us now from the Weather Center. It is going to be a cold night tonight. As you said, we do have a freeze warning in effect, and that's through 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Just how cold that wind chill will feel in the morning. Back to you. Thanks, Amanda. Rainfall from this morning has postponed the prescribed burn at the Gothi State Forest. WUFT's Nestor Montoya took a closer look at preparations for tomorrow's scheduled burn and who it will affect. Nestor, what measures are being taken to get ready for these burns? Well, Marie, the Florida Forest Service is making sure only designated areas at Gothi get burned. County Road 337 is clear today, but the same can't be said about tomorrow. The controlled burn will begin tomorrow around 10 a.m. and last two days. The Florida Forest Service says driving could be, that people should be careful when driving on surrounding roads. Reporting from the newsroom, Nestor Montoya, WUFT News. Thank you, Nestor. And the Gainesville Regional Airport is looking to make some changes. Officials say they hope those new ideas will have a positive effect for flyers. These changes come after flying a record number of travelers in 2015. Olivia Court Courtney joins us now in the studio. Olivia, what changes can Gainesville travelers expect to see in the future? Well, there will be a lot of changes and improvements, but some people may not be too happy with all of them. Construction at the airport is underway, and we were able to see some of these changes firsthand. 217,000. That's the number of people who flew out of Gainesville Regional Airport in 2015. The project will be funded by FAA and FDOT grants, along with the passenger facility charge that fi flyers pay when they buy tickets. The airport will also profit by leasing the land for the hotel. Thanks, Olivia. Shark attacks set a record in 2015. 98 unprovoked shark attacks occurred around the globe. Florida took the lead at 30 incidents last year. Researchers say record high temperatures allowed sharks to migrate farther north. The warmer temperatures also extended the beach going season and brought more people to the beach overall. And then of course, uh, because the waters are warmer in northern areas, people who normally might not go in the water now are happy to go in the water because it's within their comfort zone. So more people, more sharks, more attacks. The rate of shark attacks is not expected to decrease either. However, the number of fatal attacks has decreased slightly with only six of the 98 attacks last year being fatal. Burgess says this is because of an advance in medical treatment. 
If an upcoming vote on land use in Alachua County passes, 20 years from now, the eastern part of the county could look very different. The Board of Commissioners will vote on Plum Creek's plan to develop large portions of forests and wetlands. WUFT's Haley Zagaki spent some time at one of the sites and has more on the proposal. The land in eastern Alachua County is largely undeveloped, but a new plan would change that. Haley Zagaki, WUFT News. Meetings to address Plum Creek's proposal will be held in the Eastside High School Auditorium next week on February 16th and 18th. If county commissioners support changing the comprehensive plan, the amendment will have to go to the state for review. WUFT News First at 5 is just getting started. Coming up, we'll show you exclusive interviews from our series with Gainesville's mayoral candidates. Plus, the latest updates from the presidential race. Those stories and more coming up after the break. And we've been talking a lot about cold weather lately. Below normal temperatures will continue through the rest of the week, but coming up, I'm going to take a look at this jet stream map and see if there could be any relief in sight. You're watching WUFT News. Obscene art has been found on one Gainesville street. We'll have the details on that coming up. And primary season kicks off today, a look at who the potential favorites are in Iowa. And improvements around Gainesville have disabled residents rejoicing. But first, according to the Alachua County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Candidate Zachary Zadalis and his wife will be fired. A bomb threat sends some students home from Buholz High School. The details on that coming up. You asked, so we answered. Stay tuned for your Find Out Florida investigation. Plus, the biggest night in sports had a potential storybook ending for one of the NFL's all-time greats. I'll recap everything that went down in Super Bowl 50 in sports. WUFT News First at 5 is just getting started. Coming up in sports, we will cap off the top 10 plays of Florida football and show you which one made number one. Plus, the long-awaited Star Wars sequel hits the big screen. Check out the first reactions from last night's midnight screening. Those stories and more coming up after the break. And no doubt you've noticed the difference from yesterday to today when temperatures were in the 80s. Meteorologist Jeff Huffman and I collected the numbers and it's quite the difference from yesterday. In fact, temperatures are already falling now. I'll let you know just how long this nice weather sticks around after the break. WUFT News First at 5 is just getting started. Coming up, if your New Year's resolution was a special diet, new information says you may want to rethink your strategy. Plus, local moviegoers applaud Gainesville author Rick Yancey as the movie rendition of The Fifth Wave debuted in theaters this weekend. Those stories and more coming up after the break. And the warming trend we've got underway right now won't last long. In fact, rain chances will increase as early as Wednesday, but that was no, there was no evidence of that out there today. Check out this live shot right now. Clear skies. It was a great day, and tomorrow is going to be even greater. Coming up, I'll tell you when we, those rain chances will increase. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, well, hang on, Jonathan, don't go anywhere just yet. Jenna, you either, you can get mad at me for this, by the way. So, a little bit of context, Jenna, Jonathan, and uh, Rebecca as well. This is our last show, and myself and some of the fellows around WFT uh, decided we wanted to let you go with the bang. Let's, let's roll this video here. Johnny, Jenna, and Rebecca, good luck in the future, and come back and visit us when you're rich and famous. Good luck, guys. We wish you all the best. By my calculations and with my handy-dandy barometer, I think you guys are going to be pretty awesome in your career. Congratulations and best of luck. Rebecca, bundle up. Johnny, Jenna, Rebecca, congratulations. We're proud of you. We'll miss you guys. We'll miss you. <laughs> to a great team. Good luck on your careers. We'll miss you guys. Congratulations. <laughs> so, like they said, <laughs> congratulations, guys. Uh, it's going to be a shame to not have you here with us anymore, but we wish you the best of luck. Guys, a stat from the NFL playoffs this weekend. Road teams were 4-0 and for the first time ever, which is very interesting, but something I feel like we might have alluded to already on this show. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen this weekend? Here you go. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Chiefs, Steelers, Seahawks, Packers win. No home team wins this weekend. You heard it here first. I think that's a very bold prediction, Connor. I think you're underestimating the power of a home field advantage, so I think you might be wrong on that one. Eh, we'll see. You're right, I have to admit that, but I'm glad you have video proof because that conversation, uh, it's all a blur. We had a very warm and dry day today. That's right, it looks like it might continue throughout the night. UF mm -hmm. forecast Rebecca Colvin joins us now from the Weather Center with more. Rebecca. It was dry for most of us today, but for you two, it was a little soggy. James and Jenna participated in a dunk tank today. It was for charity for UF's cha campaign for charity, so definitely a nice cause, but our anchors there got a little wet today.